Hello, everybody. Uh, do you mind showing the next slide with the QR code, potentially? Here's the deal. This is the playbook. This is the official release of the playbook. First one to download that QR code gets the, the naming rights to the next building the Green Sports Alliance builds. It's reported a $500 million deal. Uh, but this is the playbook. It's live. Uh, but before we get going, uh, I'm going to allow uh, the experts over here to introduce themselves. Kelly? I'm Kelly Holton. I'm the Brand Activation Director at Populous. I had the pleasure of working on Climate Pledge Arena for about four years. Great. I'm Amy Martinez with Aptum. I'm a client director. Um, Aptum is an environmental consulting firm that specializes on providing sustainability solutions around energy, water, and waste for our clients. We also publish the annual uh, Sustainable Sports Index, which is a venue survey and anonymized benchmark report providing a state of sustainability practices to the industry at no cost. Awesome. So I'm going to give a, a little bit of framework here, how this playbook came to be, and then I'm going to do a Q&A. Uh, here, and uh, we're going to dive into this. Where this came from uh, was uh, in the fall at the Green Sports Alliance. We hear a lot uh, about what members are doing uh, and, and some of the things they're thinking about. We're on a lot of calls where people are building new venues, doing major renovations, uh, and we want to have a resource for them. Uh, and so Scott and I were talking, hey, how do we, how do we put this into motion? Uh, and then came into, uh, hey, let's make a playbook for this. And the thing we always hear is, if only we had designed this differently, if only this building was you know, thought about in this way, man, we could be operating a lot better. So that's, this playbook is, is a response to that, uh, but it's also forward thinking. We want to change the way uh, our mindset is when we go into uh, thinking about a new venue. And I'll tell you too that this, um, this is a really important topic. In the last six years, uh, we have built uh, 52 major venues. That's uh, the five major leagues and, and D1 sports. Uh, that's a lot of venues. We have 25 more that have been announced already and there's uh, $1.5 billion in renovations that have been announced. So this is happening all the time, and we wanted to get in front of this. Uh, the last thing I'll, I'll point out here before we go into the fundamentals is uh, our audience for this uh, has always been, how do we get in front of C-suite? How do we get in front of decision makers? So this is a resource for the folks in this room on how to lead up. How do we get this conversation going at the highest levels? And how do we make sure our next projects are geared to our audience that can make these things happen and, and adjust our mindset so these things are happening in the future? Um, the five fundamentals, potentially they're up there. Uh, this, is, this became our guiding force, and this is going to be the questions I ask and, and we talk about here. So let me get into that. Um, Kelly, let me begin with you. Uh, this playbook, it explores the importance of leadership, uh, buy-in from the beginning, uh, and that we need to embed sustainability and regenerative practices into the DNA of the project. Uh, can you tell us about the visioning and the goal setting uh, for this arena, for Climate Pledge Arena, and how that influences Climate Pledge today? Yeah. Well, first, thanks for having me. We're really excited to be here at the summit and also to be back at Climate Pledge Arena. Again, worked on this project for about four years, and I never uh, imagined that I'd have an opportunity to be on the stage at Climate Pledge Arena. I think the last... Uh, Performer I saw on the stage prior to the summit was Dave Grohl with Foo Fighters, so <laughs> big moment for me. Um, but the playbook, you know, well, Populous was the architect of record for for the venue, so just to establish that. But um, the playbook identifies site selection as a key consideration and to be discussed at early stages in the project for visioning and goal setting. So. Here at Climate Pledge Arena, you know, it's remarkable and it allowed populists to really cr design something that was unthinkable. And when the city of Seattle and Oakview Group um, decided to, you know, pursue this project and reconsider and reevaluate how this is redeveloped as this historic landmark that was built for the 1962 World's Fair, you know, that allowed us to come in and really flip the traditional arena model on its head and really think about how to do something that really ingrains sustainability from the start. So this site is a huge part of that. It's an amazing site. It's an arena that's literally in a park. 
And that's really kind of unheard of when it comes to large scale public assembly venues and especially in an urban neighborhood. And one of the greatest aspects of that is access to public transit. And I hope many of you were able to take advantage of that on your way to the summit today or tomorrow. It's also something promoted by the arena that's included in your um, game day pass for Seattle Kraken and Storm Games. Because transportation tracking is a critical aspect of creating a successful net zero strategy. So a lot of features are considered within that. Um, and it includes the rechargeable um, vehicle stations for electric vehicles. It includes um, easy streamlined access to the monorail. It includes um, also the, the ticket passes and then having the arena purchase credits that also um, serve as credits for the emissions that are outside of their control. So that is a huge part of the site and having access to that. Um, but the most ambitious goal within this site and this unique place was in the preservation of the historic roof. Sitting here, you can really get a feel for the scale of this venue and just imagine when it was suspended with stilts. It's 44 million pounds of roof that were uh, recycled and it's an epic example of that with material management and part of the original vision for the project. The construction photos are amazing to see. Um, you should definitely Google it, or there's also some construction photos near entry eight. But we had a visionary client in Oakview Group, and you know this was established from the start. And we also, it was an ambitious plan. And then in 2020, the vision excelled to another level with the Climate Pledge as the naming rights partner for the venue. And you know that really brought the story of sustainability to the forefront of the experience for the fans. And it's something that occurs through every touch point throughout your journey in this venue. And it just adds to the power of the story. It brings that message to a really front and center inspirational degree. Yeah. So. No, thank you. Uh, Amy, I want to shift it to you. This playbook, as we, we heard about, is a lot about leadership, vision, and goals. Um, but you can't do anything without the actual mechanics, actually doing the work, uh, and then getting the ROI out of that. So I want to ask you, uh, about, tell us about some of those key design considerations that go into you know, high-performing buildings. Sure. So I think embedding some of those environmental design considerations around energy, water, and waste as far as material management really early in the process can lead to the buildings that can be more energy efficient, more efficient overall, um, reduce the environmental impacts of those spaces, and also result in long-term cost savings. I think tied to the, the design considerations is also those investment strategies and considering the design early with some of those investment techniques. So really looking at the total life cycle cost and impact at the design or of your design of your systems, and it can lead to those long-term savings, as I mentioned, um, and also potentially decrease the future need for retrofitting, and we've seen that with a lot of venues um, that we've supported and some of the challenges with looking at the waste or energy needs later in the process and not looking at them earlier in the design, um, early on in the, in the stage of uh, your building. I think also looking if you can maybe embrace or expand upon the existing infrastructure, if you can, is there economic life remaining in that building that maybe a venue modernization would work better than something that's new? So it's also something to consider with the investment strategy. Um, we talked about maximizing your ROI. And the, the playbook does a great job of highlighting some case studies um, that really talk through some projects that have achieved already um, those full-scale ROI in a very short time period of three to five years. And so I think taking your own design um, ideas to the table early in the process and doing your cost analysis and looking at the timeline and seeing if they work um, for your space. Um, we've talked a little bit about, and I've heard from other speakers, about the sustainable, sustainability focused partnerships and having those conversations early. And again, with design considerations, I think that's really important. Um, and so, kind of building on that, there's some really great examples in the playbook of 
um, and examples around energy management, material management, and water. I just want to talk about a few of those, but I think what's important is there's so many experts in this room, those who've already um, have new venues, just like Climate Pledge, that have done so many of these things already. So it's leveraging and leaning on those experts, um, whether it's other venues um, that you are benchmarking with or talking to, um, or other technology solutions and partners out there. I think they can help bring some of those ideas to the table. But just to mention a few that I know we talk about in the um, playbook, from an energy perspective with design, um, passive design strategies that really rely on ambient energy sources instead of active. So things like daylighting, which as soon as you walked into Climate Pledge, you could see the be beauty of the natural light that filters into the space, um, natural ventilation and insulation as well. Um, another speaker talked about electrification and looking for renewable energy sources and renewable energy credits as well as thinking about how you can electrify your own fleet um, or provide that, that option for fans if it works um, for your space. Um, and then also other energy efficiency things such as lighting, um, Energy Star equipment and appliances and then HVAC systems. I'm just transitioning quickly over to material management, um, back of house spaces, you know, can you design something early in the process that is allows you to manage for multiple waste streams, allows you to maybe add in composting if that's an option, or doing back of house sorting, again, trying to eliminate the stream in the first place, but if sorting is necessary, building that in so you have the space that's adequate to do that. And then how do you plan for front of house as far as the number of bins, the type of bins, how do you design that in for accessibility and, and ease of use so that your fans are using the bins correctly? And then I think last, it's thinking about um, the repurpose or reuse of material. You just talked about the roof here, and I think that's a great example of effective design considerations for material management. 100%. I love it. Uh, Kelly, I'm going to go back to you. When we, when we talk about, and I want to reiterate, this playbook is not just new venues. This is not about you're going to build a new venue. This is about renovation as well. Um, but when we talk about new venues, we talk about renovations, um, we talk about leadership. What comes up over and over is beginning early, getting this in the conversation, you know, before pre-design. But there, we want them to be good financial decisions as well. We want them to be a return on investment, and we're proving that. People are proving that right now. Um, how has this venue, uh, but you guys have both worked on many, many projects, uh, leveraged uh, these projects for good, and they've been sound investments? Yeah, and I think this venue has definitely proven that. Um, the playbook talks about the importance of creating brand value and activating corporate partners. And Climate Pledge Arena is one of the most highest revenue generating arenas that's ever been built. It's, on the, it's within the ranks of Madison Square Garden and that occurred almost immediately. So really impressive. Um, we worked extensively with Oakview Group to think outside of the box on how we could create sponsorship revenue streams throughout the entire fan experience, and that's woven into a lot of the different aspects of the arena. Um, but we did that through the creation of unique brand experiences for more than 30 plus partners throughout. Um, you see those in a lot of different forms throughout the arena from food and beverage destinations to the club spaces to concourses. And you know this is the type of work that I focus on and love to do and finding ways to really honor and amplify that sense of place and the story of the venue, but then also seamlessly weaving in those brands. And you know one of the most impactful experiences or example of that is the living wall, which you all walked right past <laughs> to enter the main stage area. Um, and that is an expression of the Climate Pledge brand, which is a 250 foot long living wall that is an immersive and social media experience. So it has a lot of reach. It's become a really iconic visual. Um, it's all over TikTok. I, after my first event here, I was, you know, at, back at home and saw an influencer showing it to me on TikTok, which was <laughs> pretty, pretty funny to experience. Um, but, you know, it has 28 plant species. It tells the story of the Climate Pledge brand in restoring equality between nature, humanity, and technology. And to do that was, was to create a feeling of hope and optimism through an unexpected engagement with nature because we're two levels below ground and it's 
immersive and massive and really something to engage with when you're here. The technology, the LED screens, you'll see the circles throughout the wall, those are meant to champion the role that technology plays in preserving the climate. Um, it also creates portals to other natural worlds. But it's this type of engagement that I live for. It's about creating opportunities that create great brand value for partners, um, making that naming rights partnership really valuable and meaningful, and having a great return on investment. But it's really a holistic approach. It's about bringing those stories to the forefront. It's the operations. It's everything combined. Yeah. No, thank you. And we've, um, we've effectively run out of time. <laughs> Please find these folks, continue the conversation. I'll end it with this is um, this was such a collaborative experience uh, for the Green Sports Alliance. Not many projects get to bring together HOK, Populous, McKinstry, Ginsler. We had uh, Aptum, CES Power, Check Sammy, EcoWorks, RWDI, Veritas Initiative. We wanted to bring the best resource possible to the summit to present today and for our members as, as a value driven to elevate this conversation. Uh, and we want to keep this conversation going. So thank you. There's also a breakout session. We'll continue the conversation on this if you so choose. But uh, thank you, everybody.